Oh. Everybody, I'll see you in the back of that. <laughs> Moving the medium into his depth removes sensations and connection to the physical body. He steps to one side, leaving the mind free for myself and others. And as I have said many, many times, it is these first words which cement the link. 
and gives us the option of undertaking our talks on a regular basis. Now, there are many people who can or profess that they can undertake this style of communication. They come into your physical world and say, I can talk or allow spirit to talk on a particular spiritual topic. And their communication may be real or it may not be real. But it is with the dedication of longevity, of time, that stands a select few apart. And they undertake talks like these or demonstrations over many years, not just a little here and a little there. The dedication and commitment of time in your own spiritual work is what will determine, at least in part, the strength of your connection and the effectiveness of your work. Too often those on a spiritual path will start and then stop, walk a few steps and fall off the way. Practice meditation for a month and then move on to other things. Lethargy or sloth means that you will not fully deliver what you are meant to deliver. Or what you are capable of. So, of course, this is very much ego related. And it will take you away from what you know within yourself to be of the utmost value for yourself or others. It distracts you from your goal. and takes you away, back into the human life. You slowly shut the door, pull the curtain, or disconnect to the spiritual world. So it is the importance of courage, of determination, that is more valuable than your ability. Keep walking. You will have setbacks, of course, hurdles to overcome, and then jumps ahead that you can make. Spirit world just sits and watches your play and sees you deliver or fall. There is no judgment from us. But it is lucky that we have patience. As the path that you have started you will finish in another life.
to have no thought to your future, only to your present, and know what is true, what is needed, what you should do, your best interest for your spiritual part, and then put that as your priority. And then you will accomplish any goal. After all, it is water that, that will destroy the rock with time, with patience, and without expectation. It will find its way to the ocean. Now, I believe we have a few names on the healing list. May I have those names now, please? Uh, yep. Angelina, George, Andreas, Stephanos, Irene, Stella, Dimitri, Kristen and Joel Barnes, Mark Allo, Darlene Waddell, Ed, Nicole, Donna, Carl, Mary, Erica, Bob and Kath, Michelle, Tanil and Maria, Caleb, Evie Rose, Teresa, Charlotte and Aura, Warren, Eloise, Felicity and Aura, Pia, Sonia, Ayla, Shane, Harriet, Lorna, Courtney, Justin, Stephanie Baker, Raylene, Neil, Lynn and Carrie Balling, Wendy, Emily and Amy Andesich, Josh and Megan French, Tracy, Eric, Jill, Katie, Marianne, Jody, and Jules. Thank you. Now you could say that there that there is two types of illness. The first being physical, a physical illness which generally is very evident in the body. And the illness then, may take the intervention of your medical profession. It comes with the pain, and of course that pain is felt in the body, but not always. It circulates around and through within over a short period or even a projected period. The illness can be caused by many different things, and that is not the basis of the talk today. But the second type of illness is mental. And the mental illness is not always visible. 
And the mental illness can then, of course, influence the body. There is often a link between the mental trauma and the physical. One influencing the other. But with mental illness or illness that is stored within the mind, maybe in the form of sorrow or grief, can be a lot harder to find and to take away. It can last sometimes short period, but very often long periods of time. It can exist for more than one lifetime. And it influences your present and your future. But of course, it is based on the past. Now there are, at least to some extent, some interventions which can help. But just because there is a physical illness, it does not necessarily mean that there is mental suffering. If there is a physical illness, the suffering of the mind can then be optional. So as a story mentioned before, if you remember the sage Ramakrishna, he suffered from throat cancer. And he suffered for a long time. And when asked about it, he would say, there are times when I scream in pain, but mentally I am untouched by this illness. And the poet to lead us, the same story, he used to walk through a Shiva temple on the way to bathe in the Banaras. And after a number of months, somebody offered him some herbs to remove his pain. And said, this illness is with me, it is not me. But I have been offered this medicine. After two months of suffering, I decline your offer. And after a short period of time, the illness disappeared. Is it your body that's in pain or is it your mind? Is it your body that's holding an injury and your mind then is carrying that injury? Are you claiming the injury as who you are? Of course, that's easy to see if it is, let us say, a broken leg. But what if you claim the emotional injury as who you are? Is it true you are damaged? Or is it just the body in pain? Hmm. 
So now we will continue our talk in a simplistic way as we have promised. My first words and the words which are yet to come do have a connection. But you could also listen to them separately. I will return at the end. Ain't you lucky? Two weeks on the trot, you got me. God bless you. Anyway, philosophy according to Charlie, number 104 or something. I don't know, make the numbers up as we go. Anyway, let's get on with it. Now, it does link in a bit to what we're saying. So anyway, but this is my bit. And it's, I like to bring it down to earth and make it a little bit practical. Have you ever noticed that you, there, there's expectancy with life, ain't there? Some people live their life and they expect it to happen in certain ways and, and they expect things to, to, to be just so and it should be this. And they expect people to behave in certain ways, don't you? You know, it happens. You expect the trains to be on time and you, you expect the restaurant to get your order just right at the right temperature. And you expect people to remember your birthday, but they don't often. And you expect the, the kids to do the, their chores around the house. And, and it doesn't always happen that way, does it? You see, it, it, ain't the, it, it ain't whether they do it or don't do it that's a problem. It's your expectancy, isn't it? Eh? You expect it to be right. You expect the train to be here bang on time. And you don't like waiting. Look, it's a minute late. This is a disaster. Oh, I'm going to be a minute late the other end. You know, if this train doesn't hurry up. And it's the same with anything else. Cars, taxis, they're going to behave here, as I said. But the way, the way life should just happen according to the way you want it to happen. You want people to, to conform to your standards of living, don't you? The way you think. It doesn't happen that way very often, as I said. But rather than having an expectation, have a preference. I prefer my train to be on time, but if it ain't, then that's all right. I'll deal with it. Maybe it's meant to be. I expect my food to have peas and not carrots. Rather, I should be, I prefer peas rather than carrots. I prefer it if the kids did the washing up, but well, so be it. You see, what it takes away, it takes the edge off it, doesn't it? Having a preference. I prefer A, but we'll settle for B, and if necessary, for C, that type of thing. So your preferences takes away the grit, the grime, and the anger that can easily rage. You see, if, if, you, if you expect life to happen just this way, and it doesn't, initially the frustration arises, and then there's agitation, and then potentially there's rage. And people get all raged up about all sorts of things, don't they? They expect when you're driving your car and you indicate to change lanes, you expect the other person to let you in. But you don't always, does it? You expect to get a parking position right by the door. But unfortunately, you have to park right at the other end, miles away. And to begin with, as I said, frustration can become rage. And, and people rage over their cars, over their time, over the expectation of things to be just right. 
And it, it becomes outrageous, doesn't it? <laughs> That's a tempt of a bit of humour. Anyway, it becomes outrageous that things don't work out in your way. And then it's like life falls apart. And then all this rage and upset can then potentially become a mental issue, can't it? Mental that lives against you. I shouldn't have to do this. I'm 70 years old. This shouldn't happen. I should be looked after in my old age. I shouldn't have to wash up. You see, so then the, all of this causes agitation, causes separation, causes split, causes separation between you and the kids just because you're angry over no washing up. It's far better at these times to have a bit of humility. Humility says, well, OK, I would rather it be another way, but I'm going to do the washing up anyway. And maybe it's your role and it's your enjoyment where you do things for other people. Maybe parking some way away from the door of the shop means that you you might get a bit of exercise or you might bump into something. See, the other day, we gave a message to a gentleman and he said, let, let the uh, boat take its own course rather than you trying to push it in certain directions. And, and if we drive your boat, then we will take you into incidences and situations which will be in your benefit. If you expect it always to be exactly from A to B and it all works perfectly, of course, that ain't the case. And in that case, then there was stress and anxiety that everything should go from A to B, but unfortunately it's diverted off in another position. You never know what's going to take you. And another strategy for you is to see about what's really important in your life. Is it important that the train is always on time? Is that so important? It's, an, it's your number one importance. Or is it, is it like a number seven? Is it important that the kids wash up every time? Uh, maybe not. Maybe that's actually a number eight. Ain't that important? Well, just seeing where it is in your life importance list, then it takes away the all this rage and obstacles you have. And don't rage make everybody feel worse rather than better? And doesn't that little bit of humility and also perception by stepping back. You're never angry for why, for the reason you think you're angry. Just step back from life and see how you can make the world a brighter place. See, sometimes we expect other people to change according to what we think, and even maybe the advice of others say is important for them. You should be doing this. That's what the doctor says. Or that is what I say. And you can't change them. You can offer as much advice, advice as you can give them and you can poke them in the ribs a couple of times and pull their ear and try and lead them by the ear and say, come on, let's get this done. And at times there's reasons why it can't be done today. And your agitation means you just become part of the problem. You don't become the solution, do you? Sometimes the more you fight against it, the less chance it's going to happen. 
the more resistance you have to life, the more difficult life becomes. Rather than pull somebody towards the event that you know is better for them, help them where they are. Have some love rather than resistance. Don't you find that if you've got to do a project, let's say you've got to write a story, or maybe you've got to write a letter or even some music. But I know there's a couple of musical types here. Don't you find that if you push, it ain't going to happen. It's a struggle, isn't it? You might be able to bang out a few notes, but it's going to be hard work. But if you relax into it, it's a bit smoother, isn't it? Eh? And if you take away all the expectation, you just do it because you're having fun, well, it's even smoother still. And if you take away another step and just let it all be when it's meant to be, how it's meant to be, why, when, how, what, whatever, then you let spirit do the work, don't you? It all depends how strong you want to have a grip around the neck of life. And sometimes you want to throttle your own life, don't you? <laughs> Grab yourself by the throat and give yourself a good shake. Don't, won't make a scrap of difference. Probably won't even make you feel better either. But it might. Rather than pushing, allow. Accept. And take the steps as if they're meant to be. And you'll walk through life with more peace. You can't like drifting a, a few inches above the ground when you let it happen. But when you're in a rush, when you're in a push, when you're in a rage, everything will become hard work. So it's a little thing for you to try, and that is simple, really. Whatever happens to you today, accept it. And rather than fight it, say, train's late. Oh, well, never mind. That's the way it is. Can't do nothing about it. You know, we, we used to have a like that on the boats when we had the sailboats, not not the not the coal and steam ones, but the sail ones. And you but you, you go drifting away, and sometimes you got no wind, didn't you? You got no wind. You're in the middle of the ocean. You're kind of drifting. Oh, you just wait. You can't go raging around the boat, can you? Say, I'll be there on time. Can't do nothing about it. These are raised then, that causes a problem, isn't it? To be like a boat. Except sometimes you've got to be a cork on the ocean. You've got to bob and drift. Sometimes the train's going to be late and the parking spot's not where you want it. And the kids ain't going to do what you, they said they're going to do. And somebody ain't going to change at the rate that you want them to change. I ain't spiritual, you know, trying to give somebody a kick up the bum because they didn't do something or not doing it quick enough. You see, you think it's spiritual trying to make somebody spiritual. But that ain't the case, is it? And you say it like that, it's obvious, isn't it? You 
It ain't spiritual trying to make somebody be spiritual. Sometimes the situation needs peace rather than resistance. Sometimes there ain't no wind in the sails. And that is then a perfect scenario for a little bit of peace. And the piece I'm talking about here, you could actually have by having no thoughts. Imagine you're driving, you've got a red light, have no thoughts till it turns green. Got to do this with your eyes open, by the way, in case you think. When you come to a stop and you're waiting to cross the road, Cross the road then with awareness, but without any thoughts and expectations. Only when it's safe, of course. To so look at your life before you look at others' life. And it was Jesus that says, you criticize the, criticize the splinter in other people's eyes, but you ignore the log in your own. I think everybody else has got a problem, but you ignore your own. Are you truly being spiritual by pushing? by expecting, by nudging, by raging? Or can you accept? You see, this is how it connects to the illness bit that he mentioned. He said, you know, sometimes people get sad and, and get bad, I mean, and, and when, they, when they ain't too well, and the body's all kind of in trouble for a bit, it's the body that's in trouble, not them. So let's say you've got some dodgy, maybe asthma, or maybe you've got some issue with your ankle. Well, just because you've got it, don't mean that you can't have a little bit of peace. Because you've got these, these problems, it's like stomping around the boat, saying, come on, wind, hurry up, get me better. Rather than accepting, well, maybe I just need to be still. And you know, the third thing that's important, When you get confronted with all these expectations of life and the rage maybe starts to rise, even if it's just in the very depth of its early stages, is to look at the kids. And if they've forgot the washing up for the last 23 years or something, is remember the love is more important. When your partner don't act quite as quick as what you think, or forget your birthday, never mind. The love is more important. When you've got a park on the other side, miles away from your destination, and you're frustrated, well, the love of yourself is more important and the anger that you could replace it with. And when somebody has let you down, not once, but more than once, 
But let's say it's a stranger. Could be somebody close. But let's say a stranger has let you down. Well, the love that's into the world that you have to give away by being a lovely, lovely person is more important than letting the anger out. Release your inner loveliness, as I say, rather than the internal grizzle and gripe. To pick your preferences on what you would like rather than your expectations. Be tolerant to other people and to yourself. And always pick love as your first emotion. And don't beat yourself up if sometimes you don't find your love and find your frustration first. It'll happen, will not it? You ain't perfect, not like me. That was a bit of a joke as well, in case you weren't sure. But anyway, you're not as perfect as me. You ain't got the same nice teeth, that's for sure. Anyway, the, the another bit of humour, in case you missed that as well. Anyway, so pick your basis of life and, and let your life be a gentle flow rather than a stomp and a, and a thrash. Try a day of going through your life gently. Even if you have to push a little thing, do it with loving your heart. If you want to get the right music, do it with loving your heart. If you want to get the kids to do your, the chores they're meant to do, ask them with love in your heart. A day of being gentle. Ain't that nice? Don't you think that's a bit spiritual and spooky? Or do you think it's a bit la la, crazy wacko stuff? Hmm. Anyway. So whatever happens to you, it ain't you. It's just the event you have to deal with. And you may as well deal with it with your inner loveliness. There ends Charlie's philosophy number 104. God bless you all. ta -ra. A spiritual life on a practical level. So we will continue our talks next week. But the answer to your problems are mixed up within the words that we said today. It is often that people have resistance to the obstacles when it is the obstacles that require their true spiritual nature. You either see them as an obstacle or see them as an, a chance to express your truth.
One will give you resistance and one will give you honesty. Until next week, have a gentle day. God bless you all.